let's go. We got my man Rob in the house today, and we are going to be bringing you the goods, book funnels, book marketing, practicality use cases of a book. And I'm going to introduce you to Rob here because he's a stud. Simply put, he is a stud. Rob Cosberg is a Wall Street Journal and USA Today bestselling author and the founder of Bestseller Publishing. Simply put, Rob helps entrepreneurs become the go-to authority in their market by writing, launching, and profiting with a best-selling book. He has been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, Forbes, and Entrepreneur Magazine, as well as hundreds of other shows, podcasts, magazines, and articles. Rob, welcome to the show, my man. Thanks, Jake. What an intro, man. It's almost like I put that together myself. So good. Yeah, man, I, I love getting hyped with the intros, man. People give the intro and, and I love I love making them even, even come to life. So I, I want to just jump in here, man. I, I, I don't like to just talk about all the basic stuff here. Why is books the best way to build your brand and your business as an authority? Well, that's a good question. Why? Uh, I know that it is. Why is it? I mean, I, I can give you what my theories are. I mean, I... This was all like um, a learning experience for me when I wrote my first book almost 15 years ago, um, you know, and I did that because a mentor told me I should. And, uh, you know, I thank God that I listened to him because it changed my previous business. And of course, it led to bestseller publishing as a business for 11 years. I, I I'd probably say the why is because there's nothing as powerful as a book to convey your expertise, your authority. And when people are interested in that subject matter and get the book, um, they begin to build a relationship with you and you don't even know it. Um, and so they, they begin to, to know, like, and trust you as like the expert that can help them solve their problem. So maybe that's a long winded answer, but that'd be my guest. I'm not a psychologist though, Jake, so I'm not hundred percent sure, but that would be my guest. No, I love it. I love it. And I know I threw you in the fire with that big question. No, no, I love it. There's no fire, man. I talk, I love talking about this stuff. Love there it. There we go. So, so talk to me. You mentioned that a mentor told you to write a book 15 years ago. That yeah. spawned into bestseller publishing. That spawned into another book that spawned into helping tons of people write their book. Sure. What made the switch from you writing the first book 15 years ago to you deciding that you wanted to help other people publish their own book? Yeah, it was totally organic. I, I'd love to say that there was some, um, you know, big master plan. There was not. I wrote a book for my financial services company. Uh, I did that during the Great Recession, um, you know, back in started 2007 and then, you know, 2008. And, uh, you know, just came from a lot of pain, a really difficult place. I had a very, very successful real estate company, mortgage company, title insurance, closing company, real estate investing group. Uh, you know, doing big, big numbers. And it went to zero during the the Great Recession. And uh, I transitioned to a financial services company. And um, my book exploded my business during this real recession. And uh, so people just started coming to me because uh, we were working with so many business people. And um, they were like, how are you doing this? Like, wh like, what's going on? We're We're struggling and your business is exploding. And I was like, that's my book. My book is getting me on media. My book is getting me speaking engagements. My book is my primary lead gen tool, uh, et cetera. And this was before free plus shipping funnels. This is before Facebook or any of that stuff. And uh, we were using newspaper ads and radio ads and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, so people started asking, hey, can you help me? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, you know, let's see. Let's try. And I started helping people. I fell in love with it. I sold my financial services company and. The rest is history, as they say. That was a, a 2011. Nice, nice. I, I love that. And it, it's interesting because I, I kind of got into this space as well, very similarly. I had written my first book at 23. I had three by 28. And people are just like, how did you do it? You yeah. know, and, and when people are asking you a question, enough times you have to pay attention. Sure. Because to them, it's obvious what we could be doing or how we could be helping. But sometimes to us, it's like, whoa. And it's just something I do for fun. It's something that I enjoy mm -hmm. doing. And now all of a sudden, here we go. Let's make it happen. So you mentioned book funnels didn't exist at that time. And you mentioned that you were focused on newspaper ads. Obviously, the landscape has changed in sure. the last five years, 10 years. What have you found to be the best 
uh, methods of, of marketing and distribution for an author to build their brand with their book? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that a couple of different ways. So, in one sense, book funnels have always been around as long as there have been books, um, but but they certainly change based on the tools to get your book in front of the audience, right? So, you know, any anything, any way you can get your book in front of your ideal client is acceptable. Uh, it's just a matter of how much it's going to cost you to get the, the, your book in front of your ideal client um, and continue to get it in front of them until they either buy it, uh, get it for free even, and e eventually engage with you. I was giving my first book away for free. Um, I use a free plus shipping funnel now. So we basically use paid advertising. Um, you know, we use, uh, you know, a series of web pages, which, you know, could be termed a, a funnel these days uh, to sell the book ultimately or give the book away for free, um, but to charge people for shipping. We do that because we want we, we want to narrow the people that we're actually speaking to uh, in the author space. There's a lot of dreamers uh, that honestly just aren't interested in investing and, um, you know, what I tell people is, look, if, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, then, you know, don't ask me to invest in you because, you know, that that's not fair, right? First, invest in yourself and in your dreams. And then maybe down the road, you can ask somebody else to invest alongside. I have partners that I invest in, but those are only after I see them invest in themselves. Anyway, I am off topic, but the point in saying all of that is, uh, you know, when you get somebody to take out their credit card and give you even a few dollars, it raises the bar considerably of the kind of people that are saying, hey, I'm willing to invest in my learning, in my knowledge base, and your book is where I want to invest. So so there's lots of ways to do it that we can discuss. For me, the, the best way is through paid advertising and media and using my book as the, the attraction piece for that. Do you mind if we dig into a little bit of the behind the scenes of the free plus sure. shipping and kind of how it operates? Sure. And, and, and so as we as we do that, what I want everyone to, to kind of understand here is, is free plus shipping. If, if you're new and, you, and you're getting ready to write your first book or you have a book and you're trying to figure out different ways to market free plus shipping is basically you give your book away for free. Somebody then fills out the contact information. They pay the shipping so that they are now a customer of you. And then you send the book out using a fulfillment center or doing it yourself, depending on your volume. And then on the back end, you might have different upsells. You might have different action items that you will take them on a journey with, ultimately mm -hmm. hoping that someday they will work with you, they will hire you, or something will come from that great relationship that you've built yeah. by offering them something of incredible value. So you mentioned that you use free plus shipping and, and I've used free plus shipping for one of my books as well. And I, I love this concept. What do you think for someone who wants to build it, what do you think is the most important? Is it, you know, to understand, to have a certain amount of budget up front because ads are X, Y, Z price. Is it to make sure your back end offers are really in sync with your front end? What is your kind of philosophy on what we should know about a free plus shipping to, to leverage it? Yeah, that's good. Um, I guess the, the first thing I would say is, um, it doesn't make any sense to have a, a free plus shipping offer on the front end if you don't have your back end and what ultimately you're selling dialed in because it you don't make money on the front end. Um, I mean, maybe you'll break even, maybe you'll be a little bit in the black, um, but in most cases that will change quickly as the market gets saturated with your book and your content. My book has sold 75 thousand to a hundred thousand copies in the last two and a half years it's pretty saturated in at least the expert coaching consultant space um not fully saturated but what it means is that it's costing it cost me more money to sell a copy of my book than i am making on the front end so but that works well for me still because i have a, a dialed in back end with our enhanced ghostwriting program with uh, full book launches, even to Wall Street Journal guaranteed with PR and media, with all of that stuff. If you don't know what it is ultimately that you're selling, then it's going to be really hard. There's no reason to even take that step until you have that piece figured out. Mm. Do, do you think that, is there a price point for your back end offer 
that you think you need to be at on a minimum side to make this free plus shipping work on the front end? I, I would say yes. I, I would I would say you, you need to have something at the very bare bones minimum, three to five thousand bucks. Um, and I think that that's bare bones. I, I think it should be more than that. But if if you have something at least, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars, then you're going to be able to make some mistakes on the front end. It, it, this is OK. Like like, you know, marketing is making mistakes and you're not going to do everything right. And you're not going to do everything perfect. But if you have margin to play with, then you can make some mistakes. Uh, you can you can do do some tests and try some various things. I'm, I'm doing a direct mail campaign right now to a thousand CEOs of my book. It's costing me 20 grand and it's all just a test. Um, all I need is one client and it pays for it, but I may not get that one client. I, I know that going into it. I'm not suggesting that anybody have a $20,000 budget, but I've spent millions of dollars on Facebook ads. So I know what works and what doesn't work when you have a good margin on your back end offer, then you can make a few mistakes here or there and, and still be profitable and then figure it out and dial it in. Yeah. And you mentioned quite a few different things that, that you do from the wall street journal to the enhanced ghostwriting program. Can you talk about some of the programs that you offer and who they might be for? Yeah. So primarily when we're doing uh, our ghostwriting, we call it enhanced ghostwriting. That's our trademark process. Cause we have a very specific way that we do it. Um, that is really uh, for an expert, uh, a nonfiction author. Uh, yes, you could be writing your biography or, or autobiography, but but primarily we're working with coaches, consultants, um, professionals, uh, entrepreneurs, and experts, and uh, we help them to craft a book, you know, like mine and like you know, uh, twelve hundred others that we've done, with the goal of using that book to become, um, you know, the go-to authority in the space and attract more clients. So, so we do that. We do obviously all the publishing stuff, but anybody can do that piece of it um, and uh, design and all that. But the, the book launches, we do an Amazon as at a minimum, we do like a, a significant Amazon book launch with paid ads and social media and press releases and all that stuff. And then we can actually do uh, even a guaranteed Wall Street Journal launch where uh, it's a significant investment, but it 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 raises the the credibility bar like pretty massively. Um, and um, you know, there are some people that do it, but they do it in like anthology series, and we've done that too, which is cool. But there's nothing like having your own book hit the Wall Street Journal list, and you know, having that imagery, and then using that to like get higher speaker fees and that sort of thing. We have a PR team, so we book our clients on TV and radio, and big podcast and, and that kind of thing too. Man, this is also some, some really great stuff. And it and it's interesting because, you know, I always, people always ask me like, Jake, why do I bring on people who offer similar services to me onto this show? Yeah. And, and I tell them, I say, I say, because there's so much more to learn. And as a consumer, I want you to make the best decision for yourself, right? Sure. So I know there's, there's plenty of people that want to write books. There's no yeah. shortage of there people is. that want to write books. And I tell everyone like, look, if you like, the way that Rob is breaking it down, or you want to be a Wall Street Journal, I don't offer a Wall Street Journal. That's something that you go to Rob with and I'll push them to you all day long. And then there's other people that'll be like, yeah. no, Jake, you're my guy. I need you. Yeah. I need that big energy all the freaking time. Like, yeah, and yeah. I'm your guy. And so I really love how you kind of break down your process and how you've really, really like locked in on the things that you know work well for your clients and, and what they want to do. And so when it comes to the PR side of it, you know, I, I'm curious, you mentioned TV, radio, big podcasts. Do you feel that one medium is more influential for conversions versus one medium's more influential for like opportunity and, and viewpoint in terms of like TV might be better for a customer's viewpoint, but podcast might be better for conversion. Do you notice any of that as you go ahead and oh, produce yeah. the PR? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Um, you know, we, when we do a PR package, we always do it with a mix. So we, we actually do, when I started the the PR thing, um, like I started all of this, not, not having any like history in it. So I, I, I built it and started it like, like a consumer would want it. You know, I, I looked at this, like, you know, when I was doing my book, I wrote lots of checks to people and got real minimal returns on all the stuff. And I was like, okay, well, if I were to do this, 
you know, for me, this is what I would want. I don't care about, you know, you tell me you're going to do this stuff. Great. You're going to pitch me on a hundred different places. Fantastic. I want guarantee. I want to know you're going to guarantee to get me on two TV. And they would always say, no, we can't do that. No one can do that. I'm like, baloney, you know, you can do that. You're just not willing to. So, um, so when we built it, we said, okay, we're going to guarantee two TV spots, minimum of like six to eight spots, two TV spots, and then a mix of podcasts and that kind of thing. We do that because, you know, TV, the phone isn't going to ring because you're on TV. Yes, sometimes, but really, really rarely. However, you know, I mean, it's still like super credible and legit. I mean, no one thinks you're a scammer when you're, you know, on KTLA in Los Angeles, uh, you know, the, the, the number one station in the number two market in the country. They're like, well, you know, I mean, I guess he's legit. Um, so no one's calling because they're watching. But when you repurpose those assets uh, in your funnels, in your emails, on your social media, then people are going to uh, consider you, you know, even more credible than than before. So that's kind of the idea with TV. But podcast, actually, you can get clients from podcast. And that's what we suggest to our to our clients is, look, even though there may only be a thousand listeners, there are a thousand ideal listeners. And in that thousand ideal listeners, you're going to get some customers from that. So podcasts are great, obviously smaller market, but really dialed in. I, I love how you broke that down. Cause I was, I was just, um, I had written my book. My last book came out in October of 2021 and very recently. So about seven, eight months, nine months after I get it, I get a request from a TV station. And they're like, hey, we found your book. Can you come on the show? And I was like, of course. So yeah. I do the show. They, they publish it. They post it. You know, it was a Zoom interview, but it was on TV. And the difference in the response from people for being on that than from when I post that I'm on someone's podcast, sure. even if the viewership is 100x bigger on the podcast, to most people, TV is that like, oh my gosh, you've made it, right? right. It's, that, it's that perception. But when I look at the back end numbers, the podcasts that I've done have produced exponentially more return on that yep. time investment. And so it's really interesting how you break that down um, because I'm always kind of testing too, just like you're always marketing and doing your different experiments. I'm the same way. And I think that's really important for people to know is that different media serves a different purpose. Yeah. And so we really want to make sure that as an author, you're getting the right media attention at the right time for the business you're trying to build. And so I just think you did an incredible job breaking that down, which leads me to this. The next question that a lot of people have is, you know what, TV, you know, people have their opinion of TV, people have their opinion of podcasts, but people also have their opinion of self-publishing or traditional publishing. Yeah. And so I'd love to kind of know your take on, you know, the differences that you've noticed between the two and, you know, how you kind of operate uh, between the two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we work with traditional publishing companies as well to do like white label launches and PR form and that kind of thing. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know this for a fact, but let me tell you what my viewpoint is. So years ago when there was no real self-publishing option, I mean, there, there were always options to self-publish, right? Find a printer, right? But now there's like legit like Amazon is the 800 pound gorilla. They've lowered the bar, the barrier of entry. And, you know, everybody needs Amazon, even the big publishing houses. But years ago, the publishing houses came up with this term, vanity publishing, vanity press. Uh, that, that, that term, I mean, I don't know the entire history of it, but my opinion is that term was weaponized by the publishing companies to prevent people from taking control of their asset and what a publishing house does. And there's a reason that they have their names at the top of tall buildings. These are, these are savvy business people, right? If they're writing you a check, they're writing you a check because they're expecting to make five times, 10 times as much money. In most cases, they're never going to write you a check because you don't have the audience. You don't have the email list. You don't have the, the assets that they need. I barely do. And I have a hundred thousand person email list and 200,000 person social media following. I barely have the assets that they want. So um, when I, when I look at when, when we talk to clients, we, we let them know, look, I understand you want to be in bookstores. You can potentially be in bookstores. I ask, when was the last time you bought a book in a bookstore? I buy books on Amazon every single week. I've probably bought one book in a bookstore in the last three years. 
Um, I, I mean, because my wife was in, you know, Sephora and I was bored and walked over to the bookstore looking for something to do. I mean, you, you just, no one does that anymore. It's not our buying habit. So when it comes to traditional publishing versus a hybrid company like mine or self-publishing, you know, you get to control the asset 100% yourself. You can't do a free plus shipping funnel effectively if you're traditionally published. So that that's even an outright there because you can't, you have to buy the books at retail and, and that kills the arbitrage opportunity. So you just have to count the cost. I mean, you know, what, what are you willing to give up to have, you know, um, the, the, the moniker that you're published by a penguin or a random house, if they were to have you, uh, I'm here to tell you that we work with people every single day that used to be published by penguin and random house and now would rather control their asset themselves and make the money that the publishing house is going to make so so look i'm obviously what am i going to say i'm not a traditional publisher you know uh so you know take what i'm saying with a grain of salt do your own research but the truth of the matter is if you do have a big following then you don't need a traditional publisher because they're not going to sell your book for you if you don't have a big following then they don't want you so in both cases, do it yourself. I'm going to have to clip that last 15 <laughs> seconds because I was like, come on, baby, bring it. <laughs> bring it. I, I love that. Um, no, but it is interesting. Look, and, and there are for some people, you know, what traditional publishing may make a lot of sense depending on what your goals are and what you want to do. But for a lot yeah. of people, you know, the control and the time to me are the two biggest factors. The control of, of at retaining ownership, your royalties, your rights, and then the time, right? The time to go from start to finish on your own or with someone like you versus the time with somebody else. I think yeah. that it just makes a, a world of difference, especially if your goal on the back end is to sell a high ticket item to increase speaking fees or things like that. Yeah. So we, you know, we, we've talked a lot about some, some really high level tactical stuff today. And kind of what I want to do here is I, is I kind of want to pivot a, a little bit of, for the rest of this conversation. And, and I'm curious, what gets you so excited about the work that you do helping people bring their book to life? Like, why is this the thing that you are still passionate over a decade later to continue doing and, and, and continue to bring it to life? You know, we talked about this uh, at our staff meeting just this week, which was kind of cool. We, uh, we always do different like games or, or, or things. So we're a hundred percent virtual. We didn't used to be, I, we used to be kind of old school before COVID uh, in LA, we're all in Los Angeles, except for a few contractors. And, uh, and then, you know, COVID they, we were, uh, what, what was it called? We were a non-essential business. I kind of thought we were essential, uh, but uh, at least to the governor there, we were non-essential anyway. Uh, so we talked about that. And, um, the question was, you know, what is it about your job that you really love? What is it about what you do besides happy authors? So I'm going to I'm going to pull out the happiness of my clients. What what really makes me excited is the happiness of my clients. But let's pull that out for a second. Um the thing that I love about what I do um is I love the marketing aspect of it. Like I love creating something that people want and that makes the phone ring and the email light up and my my funnels light up. Um now that's about me, but what I love about it is that I am doing that for my clients. Well, like we're creating an asset for them that is unlike any other asset that they have in their marketing arsenal that is going to light up the phones. If, if that were still a thing, it's not, but you know, it's, it's going to light up um, their, their contacts and, uh, and opportunities. And I, that's exciting to me. I, I, I love, I love that part of the business. I love the game. I love the game. And, yeah, and it's a cool it, game. It's a fun game to play. It's a great game. It could yeah. make people very happy. It can make you very happy. And so it's a, yeah. it's a fun game. So, so I, I appreciate that answer. And what do you think, you know, you've been in this industry for a while. You're excited about what you do. You're planning on being around for a while. It seems like, yeah. where do you see this industry going in terms of the hybrid publishing, the self publishing space? Um, as we keep moving forward into uh, more and more digital stuff. Yeah, I think it's going to continue growing. I don't think there's any question about that. I, I think, um, you know, we'll see new opportunities, I think, with artificial intelligence. 
which is going to be really interesting. You know, um, I don't know how far we are off of it, but, you know, imagine, imagine you and I having a conversation like this and, uh, and this conversation being edited by artificial intelligence in such a way that it really is crafted into a book or, or formatted, you know, back in the day it was dragon naturally speaking where, you know, it's just, and there's plenty of transcription, um, you know, AI transcription devices, but imagine the editing and all of that. So I, th I think we're going to see some cool things probably in the next five or 10 years that makes the content creation part of it a lot simpler. Um, I think also something that I've seen in this business that um, I don't know, I don't know how good it is, but um you know, the, the information business is, is both a cool business and exciting business, but oftentimes it's a business that is racked with the failure of the buyer. Um, meaning that, you know, I, and, and I'm, I'm chief uh, among that myself. I have a hundred info products, many of which I've never gone through completely, or I've only gone through a little bit. And, um, and there are a lot of like done with you type programs and information pro programs where we talk to people every day and they're like, you know, I bought this for 2000. I bought this for 8,000. I never did anything with it. I don't know what's going to happen in the information space. I, I hope something does because there's such a high failure rate that it's very, very disappointing. I mean, I, that's one of the reasons that I really love what we do is because we're done for you. All you got to do is show up show up and and we'll extract the information from you and and you know oftentimes we can even use a podcast episode or whatever to to get the info and and i i think we're going to see more of that or we have to see something that that gets fixed in the information space because it's just you know you, you know what i'm talking about it's like uh, it, it just it, it's just racked with failure uh which is unfortunate yeah, I think there was a statistic and and I could be completely butchering butchering this statistic wholeheartedly, but I but I think it was like 70 80 plus percent of people who buy a course either don't open it or don't complete it. Yeah. And I don't remember exactly where I saw that, but but I think it's up there and regardless if I'm off by 20% in either direction, more than 50% of people are not opening or not completing what it is that people are offering and that's an issue because if people are really in here to get the results that they're promising, right? Or people are really yep. in here to do the things that they aim to achieve, then a focus should be on that completion. And so something that I always look for is like, how many people are completing it, yeah. assuming they're actually doing the part that they've signed up for as well, right? Because as the person delivering the information product, you are not responsible for their results to a certain extent, unless that's the offer, but they need to show up. And that's something that's really important. So it's finding that, that, that middle ground or figuring out a way to separate the people that can offer the done for you services, right? Where it's just, this is the result you're going to yeah. get it. And the people that can actually like help people get to the finish line for whatever that ultimate desire is for the consumer. And so I do think it's a very interesting dynamic and it's something that I pride myself on. I'm like, I yeah. will do whatever I have to, to, to help somebody get their result that they're looking for, because that's why you signed up in the first place. Exactly. And that's what I, that's what I told yeah. you we were going to do. So like, I'm not going to leave you hanging. Right. Yeah. And, and so I, I think that that's a very interesting um, topic and it'll definitely be something that comes out because, you know, even look at the last couple of years. We had more people than ever before join the online and info product world. You know, COVID happens, barrier to entry is low. All of a sudden people have four extra hours because they're not driving in LA traffic to and from work. Yeah, people yeah. get laid off, so they got to find a way to make money. So, so you saw an influx of people jump into this space. And yeah. I think that's even why books are more important than ever before, because it really differentiates you as someone who actually knows what they're talking about versus someone who just watched a Tony Robbins seminar and now teaches life coaching, right? And so it's a really- And there are plenty of those. Yeah, yeah, no. And so it's a very interesting thing that you bring up. Um, and so I'd love to know, you know, we talked about the AI, we talked about kind of where this is going. For you, what's the thing that you're focusing most on in the business? Is it the, the publishing side? Is it the promotion side? Is it the profit side? Like what is the big thing that, that you're really plugging forward um, and, and really focusing on for you guys? Well, for me personally, um, I'm always looking to innovate on the profit side. That That's my strength. Like no one wants me ghostwriting their book. 
you don't want me editing your book. My, my English teacher would turn over in his grave if he knew that I was doing this. Um, we have experts, you know, in our, on our team that, that do all of that. My, my personal sweet spot is using it to make money. And, and so we're always innovating. I mean, we started a new thing. It's a year in the process where we're doing this, you know, guaranteed speaking engagements, which uh, no one offers anything like that. It's totally blue ocean. Um, and so it, total innovation. We're trying something new, figuring it out. I have a partner that I've done two books with, and that's the thing, right? Like she invested in herself with me. I saw her get these results. Then I said, okay, I want to invest with you. Let's partner on this thing. Let's make this thing happen. And, and that seems to be doing well. So for me, it's always looking for the new innovation, you know, uh, a few years ago was challenges, right. And, and paid workshops and, you know, it's always some kind of self liquidating offer, like the free plus shipping or, or something like that on the front end using the book. So that's what I enjoy. Um, but obviously it, it, it starts at the book. If they don't have a book, then all the back end stuff that I do, you know, doesn't matter. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so to wrap up here, um, and then we'll get, you know, all your information and everything for where people can find you. If you had to give somebody who's been thinking about writing a book, they have a business or they're trying to start a business, they think a book could be for them, but they haven't taken the plunge. What would you recommend for them to, to do right away as their first step to making that decision? Yeah. I mean, um, I would probably say the, you know, often I just say, well, just, just write it. Um, but that's not, that's not very good advice based on your question. I, I would say um, if you have an expertise and that that expertise um, has a, a market, um, you know, where, where there is a, a real monetary value for your expertise. And if you don't know the answer to that, then just search it. Is there anybody else selling you know, this kind of expertise. And probably there is. And if there is, and and you have this expertise, then if A, it's a brand new kind of pivot for you, um, then you need to do some research and really dial in what that expertise is, what your model is. And you can begin writing your book as you do that. Um, if on the other hand, you're making money with a thing right now, Whatever it is, you're a financial advisor, you're a estate planning attorney, you're uh, a coach, you're a consultant, whatever it is, you're making money, you will make more money with a book, period. You will make more money with a book. Um, so do you want to? And if, if you want to make more money and you don't hate money, then you should have a book. And so that might mean doing it yourself, might mean going to Jake's company, it might mean coming to my company. Um, but if you have a marketable business right now that is making you money, you will make more money with a book, period. Um, and there's only a hundred different ways to do it. So I don't know. Does that answer the question? You bet it does. And I'm going to say <laughs> it one more time for everybody in the back of the room. You will make more money with the book, <laughs> you period. Will. There yeah. we go. So how do we connect with you? How do we learn more about your company? How do we get your book? Give us all the goods. Yeah, uh, publishpromoteprofit.com. That's a great place to go to. That's the book funnel. So that that's a great place to go get a free copy of the book. You will have to pay shipping. We just explained all of what that is. So it's only $7.95. Or you can go on Amazon and buy it, and it's $20. Bucks, but it's probably smarter to pay $7.95 than it is $20 with, uh, with Amazon. And obviously, um, bestsellerpublishing.org.org is our website. Sometimes people ask me, why is it .org? And I say, well, because the .com was taken. Uh, when I started the company 11 or 12 years ago, I did eventually buy the .com. But by then, you know, we had so much, uh, you know, so, so many links and everything for the .org, we kept it. So there's tons of free assets on there, uh, you know, my podcast, blog, all of that stuff. So either of those is a great spot. Beautiful. Or there you have it. You guys know what to do. Go check out Rob, go get his book, go through his funnel, see what he's doing, right? Yeah. This is what it's all about is learn from people that are doing the things you want to do. And I'll say it one more time, just in case you didn't hear Rob say it 50 times or me say it again, <laughs> you will make more money with a book, period. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, thanks so much for coming on, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, Jay. Great to meet you, buddy. Great to spend time. Cool. Everybody enjoy the episode and we'll talk to you soon.